Hey everybody, it's Dr. Jimmy Brown here. I've gotten a few emails lately asking me to explain a little bit more about what do reliability and validity mean in terms of behavioral science in general and psychology, industrial organization psychology in particular. Um, and just to get us into the context, we're talking here as they relate to testing that we do in the workplace. So reliability and validity are really important concepts because in you know in Iowa psychology, one of the things we do very a lot of times is we'll assess individuals on things like personality, intelligence, skills, all that kind of good stuff. So we have to really understand these two concepts to be able to do it properly and fairly. So to begin with, let's talk about what is reliability. Reliability is basically the consistency of the measure. Does what we're doing measure the same way over time? So to illustrate that, I'm going to take this red ribbon I got here, and I'm going to say, let's imagine this red ribbon is any construct or concept we want to have in psychology. We want to say we want a consistent measurement. Well, if we wanted to measure that, we could take out a handy-dandy ruler. This is an old green plastic ruler I think I've had since like a third grade or something. And if we were to put this here on the zero and stretch it out to the bottom, you can't see because it has things so long, all the white you know, um, numbers are rubbed off. But basically, it goes right here to right about the 10-inch mark. So this is 10 inches. So it's a very cons it, it, it's, it, it says it's 10. So let's take it off of here. Let's put it back on. Does it do the same thing? Well, let's put it on there. Yep, again, right at 10 inches. And again, standard classroom ruler, you know, one size says inches, one size says millimeters. And it's a consistent measure over time. So we're going to get that same measure every single time. Just like if we have a consistent measure of, let's say, someone's uh, verbal abilities, their ability to talk in public, we'll measure that somehow consistently over time. Now, what happens when you have an inconsistent measure? Well, let's say we were to do this, and for whatever reason, I put this on here, and it came out to be, I don't know, 42 one time, or 63 the next time, or 72 the next time. That would be an unreliable measure. Now, there's two ways you can have reliability issues. Number one is, there can be a problem with your measurement instrument. Okay? So, you, you, you can say, again, if, the, if I put this in the same spot every time I get a different, different number, that's an unreliable measure. Let's say with this, I put it on, instead of on the inches side, I put it on the millimeters side. Well, I put it there, it comes out to, what does it come out to? About 25, 25 millimeters. That is not a problem with the instrument. The instrument's just fine. I, as the user, though, am not using it properly, so that's creating some reliability issues because either I haven't been trained right, I haven't paid attention. If you want even crazier, I've got another ruler here. This is one from my dad, who's an engineer. As you can see, it's got six sides. See? One, two, three, four, five, six. And, you know, one of these is inches, right there. It's, you probably can't tell it, but see, it's got one through twelve. So there's a twelve right there. I don't know if you can see that or not. Yep, there you go. Um, and again, if I take this out and put it here, it's a, again, right at ten inches. But because it's at six sides, one of which is inches, and the other five, I'm not even sure what some of these are, because this looks like half millimeters, half, half millimeters, the others are half centimeters, and the rest of these I have no idea about. Um, there's more chance for error measurement by the user because it has more variation in it, more different ways you can apply it. So when we're thinking about reliability, I think in terms of both the instrument and the user. How do we, number one, have a very reliable instrument, and number two, how do we make it so the user can use it reliably over time? Now, validity is a, another construct concept that's very important. Validity is does the instrument measure what it's supposed to measure. So, for example, let's take intelligence. Now, we all know uh, there's the old joke in psychology about well, what is intelligence, intelligence, whatever intelligence sense measures. Okay, let's set that aside for a minute. Um, and let's assume that for this discussion, intelligence is the ability to take in and use information in a, a useful way. So I can take in information, I can use it, I can process it, I can then apply it in a useful way. Um, this is what we often call cognitive processing, cognitive abilities. And that's what we're going to call intelligence here. Well, there's a number of intelligence tests out there. The Waste, the Wexler. Uh, if you watch the, the NFL draft, you probably heard of the Wonderlick, which is a very well-known intelligence test. Now, why they all start with W, I don't know. There's lots of others that don't, but some of the most popular ones do. But um, what they are is they're different measures to determine what is someone's cognitive processing ability and how can they use that in a productive way. Now, those are fairly reliable and fairly... Um, useful measures. Now, has there always been useful measures about intelligence? Well, no. I mean, if you go back, there's a thing called phrenology, right? Phrenology was about your brain size and the size of your head and stuff. Well, could phrenology measure intelligence? Well, there was a time we thought it could. There was a time that people thought, you know, 
can you measure somebody's size of somebody's head and see if you know they're intelligent or not? Well, the answer is no, but to illustrate that, I'm going to take this tape measure that I have, which is left over from my day's selling clothes, and I'm going to measure my head here. So I'm going to take this, put it up here, and we'll do like that. There you go. It says my head's right about 24 and a quarter inches, 24 and a half inches around in circumference. I have no idea if that's big or small compared to people's heads, but is that, is that a measure of my intelligence? Absolutely not. Now here's the question though. Is it reliable? Well, let's do it again. Again, right there. Sure enough, 24 and a quarter out of 24 and a half, you know, inches. It's a reliable measure, but it's in no way valid. So an important concept here is you can have a reliable measure that gives you the same measurement time and time again, but it would be in no way valid. So that's another important concept to understand. We have to first be reliable, then determine if we're valid. So look at validity, um, what are the things we look for? Well, there's different kinds of validity. There's things like construct validity, which says, does it measure what it reports to? So if you take a, a, an IQ test, and you give someone an IQ test, you know, I, IQ is, you know, considered to be fairly predictive of success in school and success in certain knowledge um, driven type jobs, like say an accountant. The higher somebody's IQ, often the better they do at those kind of jobs. There's other things. Now, again, there's things like environment, effort, um, social constructs that can impact that success. But by and large, there's a, there's a pretty good percentage of success that you can predict based upon someone's measure on a valid reliable IQ test. So if you can do that with IQ test, you say it has construct validity. Now, there's also thing called content validity, which means does it cover all of those concepts? So like I said, with intelligence, can intelligence predict success on a job? To a degree, yes. But there are other part things, again, such as effort, motivation, um, you know, support, you know, they can predict success as well and have an impact on that. They have to be included in that content to have a valid predictor of that full job. So is intelligence a good construct, have good construct validity for job success? Yeah, pretty good. Does it have good content validity? That's debatable. Now, the other, other validity we'll talk about now is what's called base validity, which is does it look like it measures what it wants to measure? You know, there's some psycho, I'm sure we've all had psychometric tests we've taken that you take it and it's asking like, do you like putting, you know, iguanas on, or, or chameleons on plaid? Do you think you're a, a, a secret agent of Mr. Rogers or something? All kinds of crazy stuff that seems to have no relationship to what it seems to be measuring, yet they can be very valid and very reliable predictors of, say, personality often. Now, here's the trick with that. When we're doing things like clinical psychology, counseling psychology, uh, other things, you can have the, the face validity doesn't get as important. When we're doing things like publishing in academic journals, that kind of, you know, validity you're not as worried about. We're talking about here, though, is what's called face validity, which is does it appear to measure what it purports to measure? And again, for things like clinical psychology, counseling, publishing, peer-reviewed academic journals, while it's important, it's not as important. If you're working with, um, let's say, business people, face validity becomes very much more important because you have a lot of folks who are not knee-deep in psychometrics, don't understand a lot of psychometric theory, don't, aren't really worried about things like content and constructs and who said what theory and that, and, you know, are you pulling from Piaget, are you pulling from that, they, they don't care. Does it look like it measures what you want to measure? So again, when dealing with business people and dealing with, from an industrial organization psychology standpoint, probably best to have not only have good construct and good content validity, but also make sure you have face validity as well. Because frankly, you know, if they, if they don't trust the process, it causes them more problems. So that's about it. Hope all's well, um, and we'll see you. Thanks.